Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to talk about makeup. So, today's video is my 22 in 22 project pan update. If you're wondering why I look like a fairy princess for this update, it's because I felt like it. <laughs> what better reason to dress up? The most recent video that I posted was like a, a journey into the 2022 spring style trends. And so like I've been thinking a lot about it and I decided I would wear something today that's like the, the pinnacle of the style trend. And it's just something that I've had. This is something that, you know, this is like stage wear for me, like what I'd wear when I perform. Um, but because I haven't been on a stage in a while, I figured, you know what? This is going to be my stage today. So this actually suits three different trends that are going on right now. And just to list them really quickly, more is more. This is kind of a lot. This is kind of a lot together. It's just enough. Uh, Trend number two is like 3D flowers. So like applique flowers, embroidered flowers. And like, so this fits perfectly. Trend number three is something I actually didn't mention in the video because I didn't think I had anything. But feathers are part of the trend. And I totally forgot that these have feathers and I can fly away. That's not what this video was about. If you want to see stuff about style trends, go watch the other video. <laughs> this video is my 22 and 22 project pan update. And wow, we better dive right into it because I've got a lot to talk about. I'll be sure to link the playlist for my project pans in the show notes and in the cards just in case you want to catch up. But in case you just want to jump right in, uh, the basic gist of this project is it is a rolling style usage-based project. So I'm not trying to hit pan on anything. The whole goal is for me to get to know my products because my end goal is to be able to do a very educated declutter at the end of the year. So I want to make sure I really educate myself about what my tastes are and what products I really enjoy using the most so that I keep the ones that I love and I can give away the ones that just don't suit me. Um, and so to do that, I am using each of the 22 products that are in my project at the time 22 times within two months. And uh, then I can roll them out. This is going to be another busy update because I rolled in 22 products and I can roll all of them back out again because I used them all 22 times. So let's jump right in. Two quick side notes before we begin. I will put timestamps in this video so you can simply fast forward to the most relevant content for you. And second of all, if you see me looking down, this is where my notebook is. My brain is a little bit overflowing right now, so I need all the help I can get. I'll probably be looking down a lot. I'll group the first two products together because they're both from Bobby Brown and it's the vitamin enriched line. So it was the face base and the eye base. And I have to say, I love these. They're very good for hydrating the skin. I feel like they make a perfect base for makeup. They don't necessarily add any longevity, I don't think. My makeup lasted any longer when I used it, but it made the application process so pleasant. I feel like it just made my skin look beautiful and ready to accept makeup, and then the makeup went on beautifully over it. So I am a huge fan of these two products. So yay, A+. Plus. Next thing was the Ulta Beauty Lip Primer. Um, this smells like maple syrup, which I love. It goes on very comfortably, which I love. I don't feel like it made the longevity of my bullet lipsticks last any longer <laughs> than they would have otherwise. Um, when it came to liquid lipsticks, I feel like it did make a difference, but not in the way you'd think. First of all, um, in order to test it, I put the lip primer on half of my lip and not on the other half. And then I applied a lip, the same liquid lipstick to both sides. And I noticed immediately that the color was more intense on the side where I did not have the lip primer on it. And it, that's because like the lip primer kind of creates like a barrier on top of your lips. And so like the color couldn't be as saturated because there was this like emollient layer between your lips and the product. Um, but that layer made it much more comfortable to wear liquid lipsticks. So if you have a really drying liquid lipstick, this primer is actually really nice, um, as long as you don't mind losing some of the intensity of the color. As for the longevity, it did not make that liquid lipstick last any longer, um, but I, what I noticed was that it wore better. So I feel like the color wore off at the same speed, but it wore off more evenly on the side with the lip primer. So 
you know, on this side, it started to look kind of patchy and blotchy and bad. Like I, I had to reapply the lipstick. But on this side, even though the lipstick was wearing off, it was wearing off very evenly and it looked very natural. And had I had the lip primer on both sides of my lips, I wouldn't have had to retouch the lipstick for a lot longer. So ultimately, I do feel like it adds to the longevity of liquid lipsticks, just not in the way you'd think, if that makes any sense. Next up, we have the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Eye Primer. And this one is a clear no for me. I have super oily eyelids. They eat eyeshadow for breakfast. They do not want eyeshadow to stay on them. So just because this Pro Filter eye primer didn't work for me doesn't mean it's a bad one. In fact, um, I think it was Julia Adams here on YouTube. She says that she has oily eyelids, and that's actually the reason that I wanted to try this one because it worked for her. Um, but this just goes to show you that everybody's body chemistry is different. And even though we might have similar problems or similar issues, that doesn't necessarily mean that the same products are going to work for us. So this one, unfortunately, is a no for me. I even tried using it as like an under eye primer because if you watched my last um, makeup favorites video um, from last week, then you'll know that one of the things that I've been having problems with with my makeup lately has been my under eyes. I feel like no matter what concealer I use, my under eyes just do not look nice. And one of the, the ways I found to solve this problem is I'll tap an eye cream on over my concealer. And I just feel like it makes me look more awake and more alive. It just my, makes my under eyes look juicier. And so I thought, well, maybe... I can use this primer as like an under eye primer and maybe that will help. Uh, no, <laughs> it did not. It was a disaster. I tried it three times, twice underneath my concealer, once over my concealer. All three times it was a disaster and made my under eyes look way worse than they would have had I not used it. So this one is just a clear no for me. But I think knowing my mom and her skin type, I think this might actually be a really nice eye primer for her. So I think I'm going to give it to her. Next up is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Foundation. Um, this is a very nice product. Uh, I'm going to be saying some stuff, like some negative things I found out about it, but not because I think it's a bad product in and of itself. It's just that I was trying it for some very specific reasons and it didn't achieve what I wanted it to. First off, I bought it because I was hoping that it would be like a better version of my current favorite. Um, the, my go-to day-to-day foundation tends to be the It Cosmetics CC Cream, um, just because it's got mineral sunscreen in it. It's got really nice coverage, and the finish is really nice. I've always liked that one. Um, but two of the things that I wasn't so crazy about was the shade wasn't like absolutely perfect for me. It's definitely close enough that I can make it work. But you know, it's not 100%, so I thought maybe I could get a closer match with the Estee Lauder shades because they just have different tones and, and like, a whole lot more shades. Um, and the second thing is the It Cosmetic CC Cream, like, especially in the summertime, usually only gives me, like, six, maybe eight hours of wear, and I'm kind of looking for, like, eight to ten hours of solid wear, especially because foundation never seems to want to stay put on my nose. It's, like, a superpower. It just repels foundation. And so I was kind of hoping that the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue would like be everything that it, the It Cosmetic CC Cream is and more. And um, unfortunately, it just wasn't. It was very nice, um, the, but the shade match wasn't any closer. It was different, <laughs> but I'd say it was like just, just as close, but no cigar you know, like, so both of them I can definitely make work, um, you know, but it just wasn't a perfect match. Um, as for the finish, it's a little bit too radiant for my liking. The It Cosmetics CC Cream has like the perfect amount of radiance for me. It's radiant enough to make the dry patches on my skin look nice, but it's also not so radiant that it emphasizes any of my larger pores or texture. I found that the, um, the Futurist Hydro Rescue was a little bit too radiant and it was kind of emphasizing the pores, especially like in the center of my face. And I just really didn't like that. Um, and then the other thing was, like, the longevity wasn't really much longer than the It Cosmetic CC Cream, especially on my nose. It just leapt right off. <laughs> so that wasn't an improvement either. So I will be using it up, and I do think that it's, like, nice, but I don't think I'll be repurchasing it because the uh, It Cosmetic CC Cream still wins out for me. 
The next product, however, was a real win. It was the Estee Lauder Satin Cream Blush in O2 Mauve Light. I really enjoyed this. The finish was beautiful. It was a sheen without a shine. So it didn't do what um, that Futurist Hydro Rescue Foundation did. It didn't emphasize any pores. It didn't emphasize any texture. It just looked beautiful. And I think the shade will actually be really nice in the summertime. So I think I'm going to have to put it away for now just so I can test out some other things. But I have a feeling it might be uh, coming back out to visit this summer. Next up is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Max Coverage Camouflage Foundation in the shade Creamy Tan. Um, this one is too dark and too cool for me, which is why I used it as a nose contour, and it worked really well because it was just a very nice shade. It goes on very nicely. You need the tiniest bit tiniest bit because it is a camouflage foundation so it's like meant to cover up things like tattoos so it is like high coverage and if you use a lot it will look cakey very fast um, but I think that's actually why I liked it so much on my nose because like I said my nose just repels all makeup and so this one I felt like it was a little bit harder for my nose to repel it it still did by the end of the day but I felt like I got a good solid like eight to nine hours of wear, which for my nose is like a miracle. So I'm almost wondering if I need to like repurchase this in like my shade at some point as my nose foundation, which sounds very extra, but I'm beginning to wonder if I need that. Um, I don't think that this foundation would work for me on the rest of my face just because um, it is heavy. And so it, I think it like would get kind of cakey looking, but my nose, I don't tend to have that problem. Like my nose doesn't get cakey. So maybe at some point in the future, that would actually be something fun to experiment with. For now, I'm just happy to use the cream tan shade as my nose contour, and it will probably last me for the next 50 years because I use so little of it at a time because a little goes a long way. The next item was also a huge win for me. It was the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Amethyst. It's a beautiful cream shadow in stick form. It goes on very easily without any tugging. The color is beautiful, at least for my skin tone. Um, it made like a very nice eye contour. Um, so I would like, you know, use it a little bit to minimize my brow bone. I would use it on the outer corner of my lid. I would use it as a liner. And it's got a nice gleam to it. So it's not like perfectly matte, but it's not glittery at all. I just felt like it was a perfect subtle color. I really enjoyed it. It's very easy to blend out with a brush. So once I would apply it directly from the stick, then I would just use a, a brush to blend it out. And it worked great every single time. I was always really happy with the look. And it's just easy and comfortable to use and to wear. Um, I even tried using it as a lipstick, actually. <laughs> um, if you watch the, my last video, the um, spring trends. I'm actually wearing it as a lipstick. I had a um, pink lip oil on. It was like an Ulta Beauty lip oil. And it was like a peachy pink. And it was like a little bit too much for me for that video. And so what I did was I just kind of, you know, rubbed my finger on the caviar stick and then kind of like mixed it in directly on my lips um, with like that lip oil. And it kind of muted down that pink color and made it into this beautiful nude. But I have to say, even without the lip oil, when I was just wearing a clear gloss, like it, even though it was, it's like a purple color in and of itself, it didn't look like out of place. It was actually like a really nice purpley nude, which is strange, but it worked. And so uh, I love it on the eyes. I love it on the lips. I love it all together. It was 100% a win. Next up is my Becca highlighter in the shade Moonstone. This is as beautiful as it ever was. I really enjoyed using it and I will continue to do so until it's gone. Um, it's just nice. As for the NYX lip liner in the shade Nude Pink, um, the formula is really nice, but the shade is a bit light for me. So I ended up using it instead of as a lip liner, I used it as like a lip base. So I would apply it as a lip liner and then kind of just fill in my lips with it. And then I would usually wear um, the shade Sally Soft Honey. Um, it's like a Gucci lipstick, um, kind of almost like a glossy formula. And I would use that over it. And I thought that combination was actually perfect. The formula of the NYX lip liners, I think is just really nice. It's um, not as soft as something like the Charlotte Tilbury or the Lisa Eldridge formula. It's more like waxy. So it's, it's more similar to, I'd say, like the MAC formula. Um, but I actually like that a little bit better. I find that especially like as I get older, it's it glides over my skin better. Um, so I actually really enjoy it. The color's not ideal, but I can definitely make it work. And um, I actually am going through it quite fast because I'm using it as a base. So, um, you know, all in all, 
I think it's generally a win. And if I ever had to repurchase it, I think I would just get it in a different color. Speaking of lips, the next item is Tom Ford Lip Color in the shade 63 Devore. That's a beautiful nude color, but what I found out wearing it so often in a month is that it was much cooler toned than I originally thought. Uh, you know, it's still nude. It's not, you know, like obscenely cool toned for me or anything. But I noticed that a couple of times I was wearing it on camera and I thought, hmm, that's cooler than I thought it was. And it almost reminded me a little bit of the way Amethyst looks, you know, that eyeshadow looks on my lips when I wear that. It's not quite as extreme, but I was like, huh. That's a whole lot more cool-toned and bluish and purpley than I thought it was. But it's still beautiful. I'm just glad to know that if I need a nice, subtle, cool-toned lipstick, that I have that one. Unfortunately, the next product is a fail. It's the ZC Dear Autumn Air Ink Eyeliner. It's a brown liquid liner. And I usually like to use a brown liquid liner to do like a more dramatic eyeline um, when I really want something stark. But this one I cannot use that way because it bleeds like so much so that it looks like creepy tree branches are like growing across my eye it is not cool <laughs> like no liquid liner should do that I can make it work what I've been doing is I've been taking like a gel liner like a brown gel liner and you know just using that as like a typical like I smoke it out a little bit and then I'll put the ZC liner kind of at the very base in between my individual eyelashes and that works. Then it doesn't really bleed or anything. Um, and it does give my lashes kind of a thicker effect because, like, the base looks thicker. It just makes it look like I have more eyelashes. But, um, I mean, like, that's what I would use a brown eyeliner for anyway. But, like, I also want to use it to get that really stark line, and I can't do that. So that really frustrates me. So I'm, I'm never going to repurchase this one again. But I am going to use it up because I do have it. Next up is the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand in the shade Fair Medium. Um, this one is... I feel like it, for me and my skin tone, it's more of a bronzer. It's too red toned for it to work as a contour for me. Um, and as a bronzer, it's not like the ideal shade, but because it does blend out so nicely and the formula is really nice, it does work. So, you know, I think I'll use it up, but uh, I'm not like the biggest fan of this particular color for my skin tone. Next up is a BH Cosmetic Blush Single. It was depotted from a palette. Um, it was nice. The finish was nice. It went on nicely. The color was nice. It was a nice blush. It didn't blow my mind or anything, but powder blushes rarely do. So you can take that for what it's worth. I think, you know, I'll keep it around for a while yet because I, I have nothing bad to say about it. Then we have the Estee Lauder Pure Color Eyeshadow in the shade Iris Pearl. This particular shadow launched me onto a whole thing about pastel shadows and building my own palette. So I have to say alone for that reason, it was totally worth it that it was in this project. I ended up really enjoying this shade, um, especially because I really love that like, iridescent periwinkle shimmer that's in it because I noticed that I had two matte shadows that were kind of the same color pretty much the same color, but they didn't have that iridescent sheen. So I think it's actually a really special color. Um, but my mom, it was her eyeshadow, and then she decluttered it to me, and then she saw it on me, and she's like, ooh, if you don't want it, I'll take it back. So I think I'm going to give it back to her, and I have a feeling it's going to kind of like be a mutual, like shared eyeshadow that will just, I'll use it when I go visit her or something. Um, and that's fine, because considering the fact that I have very similar matte shadows, like, I'll be totally fine. <laughs> The next thing I tried was my Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer, and I love it. It is finely milled. It goes on so easily, blends out so nicely. The finish is this beautiful, soft, matte finish. The color really suits my skin tone right now, so I was just 100% happy with that one. Then I tried the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer, and unfortunately, it settled. I really wanted to like this one because it's such a thin formula, but it has like a decent amount of coverage. And that's the sort of thing I'm looking for. I want it to be a lightweight formula, but I want it to uh, like pack a punch. And I really thought this might be it, but it's just not. Like even when I tried, like I would put it on my hand, like where my skin is, you know, perfectly fine and smooth and not wrinkly at all. And when I rubbed it in and let it set, I noticed that even this skin, which always looks perfectly fine, looked crepey. And I was just like, wow, this concealer has the power to make even not crepey skin look crepey. I've been using it as a spot concealer instead, but I have to make sure that the spot is very small because if you put it on any area at all, it just makes the skin look crepey, at least on my skin. 
maybe it works better for other people, but for me, like, it's just not a good combination. So unfortunately, I have to say this one is definitely not ideal. Next, we have a product that makes me go, hmm. It's the Caudalie Beauty Elixir. It's a very nice spray bottle, very gentle spray. It smells very nice, but the product has oils in it. And so it's not the sort of thing you can use as a setting spray. So I assume you use it as like a prep spray and that's how I've been using it. And I would just like spray it on before I put on my Bobbi Brown primer and I would let it soak in first. So I would basically just like spray it on my face, pat it in, go about my business for a few minutes and then come back and do my makeup. And it was fine, it smelled nice. It was a very nice experience, but... Um, other than like feeling like I was in a spa, I don't know that it did anything. So uh, I'll enjoy it while I have it. It's almost gone, um, but it's not something I feel like I would ever need to go purchase. Next, we have the Patrick Ta Brow Wax. I really like this product, but I still have kind of mixed feelings. And the reason is because when I use a brow gel, I open the gel, brush it in, close the gel, done. When I use the brow wax, I have to open the package, then I have to get my spray bottle, open the spray bottle, spray some water in there, close the spray bottle, put the spray bottle back, then I have to get a spoolie, rub the spoolie in there, then I can apply the product, I brush it in, then I have to let it dry, then I can kind of brush it up, and then my brows look great. But... I mean, it took me so much longer to describe that than it did with the brow gel. So it's not like the most efficient way of doing my brows. I do like the way it looks. I feel like it really enhances the volume of the individual brow hairs very well. And I like the fact that I can really fluff them up. I know a lot of people use brow wax to do like that laminated brow style, but I kind of like fluffier, like I want my brows to look like little caterpillars you know, living on my head. And um, the Patrick Ta Brow Wax, I feel like does that really nicely. So like I would, I would, what I'll do is I'll like back brush them. So I'll brush them like the wrong way, let them dry like that for a few minutes and then I'll brush them upwards. And then I feel like they're still like stuck out from my face a little bit, but they're like fluffy and thick and beautiful. However, it is a wax, and so it doesn't dry down completely. And so I've noticed, like, if I happened to be doing something, say, you know, at work, and I, you know, brushed up against my face with some semblance of pressure, I'd get that laminated brow look. Like, all of a sudden, my brows would be plastered to my face. And it didn't look bad, but that's just not the look I'm going for. And I don't want to have to worry about my brows getting stuck to my forehead. So um, I do like it. But I feel like I like it for a very specific purpose, and it's not super efficient. So I'm going to continue enjoying using it. I do think it has a place in my makeup kit, but um, yeah, it has to be on days when I'm feeling kind of extra and I'm willing to baby myself. The next thing I tried was a highlighter that's not really a highlighter. It's the Laura Geller French Vanilla Baked Highlighter. This is super subtle. It's almost matte. In fact, I would call it a matte highlighter, which seems very counterintuitive, and it is counterintuitive. But I feel like it's actually very nice when on camera because I feel like having skin that's too glowy when I'm on camera is kind of like not the best thing because it enlarges pores and it, it just doesn't look the best. But if I can use a highlighter in the places I would normally use a highlighter, but not have it be super shiny, then it's perfect. So I actually really like this product, but for specific purposes. So I do think I'm going to keep it, but it's going to be one of those things. I'm glad that it's a mini because I don't need it that often. When I need it, it's perfect, but I don't need it all that often. So definitely a win, but only for specific situations. Ah, now we're down to the last two products getting rolled out. One of them is an eyeliner. It's the Melt All Day Every Day Reflect Eyeliner in Mixtape. I really enjoyed the shade. I really enjoyed the consistency. It went onto my eye really easily without tugging. It was very easy to blend out as a liner if I wanted a smoky look. The one thing that it couldn't do was waterline stuff. It didn't irritate my eye at all, but it just didn't stay. <laughs> it smudged everywhere. Like the second I tried to put it in my waterline, it just didn't work. So as far as I'm concerned, the Melt All Day Every Day um, eyeliners are very nice. They're just not waterline friendly for me and my watery eyes. And then we come to what was, for me, probably the most disappointing product in the whole lineup this month. And that was the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm Triple Rip. The reason that I 
purchase this palette was to use actually as eyeshadow toppers. I really liked all three colors. I really thought it would be fun to use. And to be honest, like the the glittery particles in there, they're beautiful. They're multidimensional. They've got different colors. They sparkle nicely. Like if it would just stay on my eyelids, it would be perfect. I tried using it with the Urban Decay Eye Primer with the Milani eye primer, with the Fenty Beauty eye primer. I tried uh, using it with the MAC Paint Pot. Then I tried combining all manner of combinations of all those primers, and none of them got this stuff to stay. So I started, I tried using it with the NYX Glitter Glue. That didn't get it to stay. The one thing that actually worked with this particular product was the Pat McGrath eyeshadow primer stick. That works really well and it makes the intensity of um, this Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb triple drip really go to the next level and then it looks beautiful but I cannot use my finger to apply it I cannot use a brush to apply it I have to use a silicone applicator and like it's not like this is the worst thing ever I found a primer that works I found a silicone applicator that works but it's so finicky and then I can't use it with like a colored eyeshadow base because I have to use the the Pat McGrath primer on its own. Maybe I just haven't found quite the right amount of stuff to use yet. But the thing is, I have discoloration on my eyelids. And I actually don't mind it. Sometimes I even keep it there because I want to use it like as part of the look. Um, and so on days like that, then the Fenty Beauty what is it called? Diamond bomb triple drip would be great <laughs> because, you know, then I would be able to use the discoloration on my eyes for this very sultry look and then have the glitter pop, you know? So it'd be great. The only thing is like, that is like a very specific situation. And then I have to use very specific products in this very specific situation to get this very specific look. And I kind of want my stuff to be more versatile than that. So I think... This one's probably going to get decluttered. I'm going to keep it around for a while because, to be honest, I love the way it looks when I use the Pat McGrath primer stick. Then I think it's beautiful, and then it's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to see how often I actually grab for it. And if it turns out that I'm wearing it a lot, then I'll keep it. But this one's definitely on the chopping block. That was all the rollouts. Woohoo! So let's get to what I'm rolling in this month. The first thing is a primer. I have this box of primers here that people have just given me, and whoa, they're falling out. Um, and I'm not sure how old they are because, you know, I think a lot of people get primers in like subscription boxes and stuff. And a lot of people I know don't even use primers, and so I usually end up getting them. But like I said, I don't know how old they are. So if I end up trying this primer and it turns out to be like old or nasty or like it gives me a rash, I'm definitely going to switch it out. But I figure, you know, I'll give it a try. This is the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer. So we'll see how this one works. Next up is some foundation. I thought I would try this again. This is my RCMA uh, foundation and I used to like using this on stage. Um, I just haven't broken it out in a while because I haven't been performing much. And so I want to see if the formula is still okay. I want to see if the shade still matches because I don't know if it's just because like we've all been isolated for so long and maybe I'm turning into a ghost, but I feel like <laughs> I'm getting paler. It's very, very strange. So I don't even know if like this particular palette is going to work for me anymore. So I thought now would be a good time to see if the formula is still okay, if the colors are still okay, because uh, I know that I used to love this. And so I'm going to see if I still do. And the last of the complexion products is a concealer. It's the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. Um, this is supposed to be great for dark circles. So I'm really hoping this will be my saving grace. I've had it for a while. Like I've been cycling through all of my concealers, trying to find one that's going to work best. And so I figured I'll just do a dedicated test of this 22 times because it seemed to work really well for that Kaja. I definitely found out that I didn't like it. So I'm hoping I'll I'll be able to get a verdict on this one now. Next up, I have two more products from the primer box. One of them is an eyeshadow primer and it's from Milani. I've actually used this one before. And as I recall, it was very similar to the Urban Decay one. And I sincerely hope it is because uh, I really did enjoy using the Urban Decay one. It worked really well for me. Um, and the other eyeshadow primer I'm going to be trying is this KVD 
uh, color correcting eyeshadow primer stick in the shade light. Um, when I did like a shade test of it on my hand, it was very similar to the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. So um, I'm going to try using this and seeing if that works because if it does, it'd be great because it looks like it'd be easier to travel with in a paint pot. So here's hoping. Next up, I have this Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel Bronze Universel Bronzing Makeup Base. Uh, I do not know how old this is. I do not know if it's the old formula or the new formula because the friend that gave it to me cannot remember. It smells beautiful. Mm, it does. And I have put it on my face. It did make, didn't make me break out or anything. So I'm assuming it's fine. If the next time you see me, I have six heads and they're all screaming bloody murder. This is probably the culprit, so let's just hope that doesn't happen. Next up, we have this Physician's Formula Natural Defense Triple Defense Multicolor Stick Sunscreen. It's broad spectrum SPF 20, and it is a cream blush. So I thought this would be a fun color to try, and, you know, it is getting warmer, I hope, and so hopefully I will need sunscreen. And then uh, another cream product I have here is this uh, Wet and Wild Dual Ended Contour Stick. And it has like highlight on one end, contour on the other. And so I'm going to try this and see how that works for me. Next up, I have a couple of brow products. I am still making my way through that old Lancome brow pencil, the like never ending one, because I really want to see how long it takes to get through that. So I've been using that every day. But I decided, you know, some days I really want a brow pen. And so I thought I would break out my MAC, what is it called? MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint. And this is in the shade Spiked. And I already know that I like the pen part, um, but I'm not so sure about the color of this one. And so I wanted to kind of check that out. And then it also has this powder at the end. And so I want to kind of experiment with that because I never did use it much. And then I also have a brow gel. Um, so it's a little bit easier to use than that Patrick Ta Brow Wax. It's the Elf Brow Wow in the shade neutral brown. And so that's what I will be using on my brows this month. And then I decided I haven't had any eyeshadow palettes in this project yet. And I kind of want to do that because I have an eyeshadow palette that I'm really not sure about. In fact, I think I might not like it. That's, that's, difficult because I love eyeshadow palettes. I can find I can find something to love in any eyeshadow palette, but this one I'm not so sure about. It's the Patrick Ta for Eyes Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. And this you'd think I'd love it because I am such a neutrals person and I mean like look at that color story. It's what I have on my eyes today. And to be honest, like I really like these cream shadows here. Um but I haven't really tried them on my lid. I basically use them either for contouring or as a liner. So I don't know how they are about the creasing thing, so I do have to test those out. I have really enjoyed the mattes, but then like this lightest color matte here has like sparkles in it and I've never been a fan of matte shadows with sparkles in them. So I've been trying to figure out how to use this. Once again, the Pat McGrath eyeshadow primer seems to like save the day with this one as well. Um, but then there's like shades like this one. There's two shades like this in the palette and they're like very glittery and very hard to apply. So I don't know how I feel about this. Every time I use it, I feel like the look is is like okay, but not great. So I'm, I'm going to like really put it on the chopping block this month and see what I think about it. And maybe it's just not for me. But I figured if I'm going to put in a neutral palette, I also need a colorful palette, especially because it's spring. And uh, if you've been following me the past couple of weeks, you'll know I've been really into like pastels and colors and things. So I thought I would also put in the um, Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette. Um, I've used this a bunch of times. You can never tell that I use my eyeshadows because it takes about a million times. I usually go in with like a very fluffy brush and a very light hand. So like I think I have to use a shadow probably a thousand times before you see a dip in it. <laughs> like some of my favorite eyeshadows I've had for years and I use almost every day and I still haven't hit pan in them. So I don't know. This this like looks brand new. I mean, I probably only used it like 30 times, but I mean, I, I want it to look used. I see so many project panners out there with this like these gorgeous dips and all of this like smeariness. It's like good. And I, I want smeariness. And so um, that's what I'd like to try to do with this palette this month. At least make it look like I've used it like I have. <laughs> it's such a pretty color story. Um, so I thought I would add this in there, but I'm also including two single shadows like as part of this palette. 
And let me see if I can find them. Because I feel like they complement the palette really well. One of them is this Avon shadow that I got from my aunt. It's the color Aqua Chiffon. And there's a color similar to this in the Huda Beauty palette, but that one's matte. And this one has like some shine to it. So I thought it might like be kind of interesting to use the two of those together. And then I have this Pat McGrath Labs shadow in the color Ultraviolet Blue. It's a pressed pigment. And this is also like really intense. Like I feel like it's a deeper intensity a little bit than some of the Huda colors. And so I thought like this would be like a really nice complement to that palette. And for my palettes, like the goal is to use the palette itself 22 times. And I would like to use each shadow at least once within that 22 times. So that way I should be able to get a feel of if I really like the palettes, how they work for me, when I want to use them, and then I can figure out if I want to keep them or not. So let's stick to eyes for now. Let's talk about some eyeliners I'm putting in here. These three I'm grouping together as one because they're all from the same company. Um, it's JD Glow Cosmetics, and it's these like sparkly eyeliners. And um, the thing is, I know that I like the formula if, if it's not too dry. Um, I, let's see, in the course of my life, I think I've gotten seven of these and two of them have been dry from the get-go. Like, I received them in the mail and was so excited to put them on my face that like 30 seconds later, I had ripped open, you know, the package and was putting them on my eyes and two of them were immediately too dry to use. And I tried, you know, using things like Duraline to, you know, make them more fluid, but it just did not work. Like, nothing worked. They just they were gross and chunky and I have to declutter them. I, ha I was like not willing to because like they were such pretty colors that I was like, no, maybe I can make them work. I can't. Um, <laughs> but basically I'm counting these three as like one product um, because I'm just trying to test them to make sure that the formula is like fluid enough for me to use it and really enjoy it. Um, but I have to say when the formula isn't too dry, then it's superb. So um, the three shades that I'm going to be using are this um, multi-chrome Translade. And then this bright blue is called FaceTime. And then this I actually like to use on like the inner third of my eyelids. And it's called rule number one. And because I've got so many blue eyeshadows, I thought I would add in this Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eye Pencil in the shade LSD. It's a very blue sparkly color. Um, I really enjoy gel liners like this, especially the Urban Decay 24-7 eye pencils. But this one, um, it's not that old actually, but I think it might be drying out. And that's why I'd like to try to get some use out of it right now, see if it actually is drying out. Um, and if it is, <laughs> then maybe it's time to, to move it on out, but we'll see. I'll use it and find out. And the last eyeliner I'm rolling in is from Lethal Cosmetics in the shade BPM, which and I love the shade name because Beats Per Minute is just part of my daily work as a musician. So I, I'm always a fan of their music shade names. I thought this pink would be like the ideal color to roll in right now. Um, I bought this at the same time that I bought the mustard color one that I fell in love with, but I didn't want to open this yet. Like this has never been opened because I know that they dry out relatively quickly. At least that's what I've heard through the grapevine. And so, but I think like now is the time to open it up. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to enjoy it. And I'll see, maybe I'll use it as a cream eyeshadow. Maybe I'll use it as a liner. I've never had a, an eyeliner in this color, so <laughs> I have no idea how it's going to work, but that's what this project is for. Let's move on to some powder cheek formulas. I've got this Cover Effects Monochromatic Blush Duo in the color Pink Dahlia. And um, every time I use this blush, I think that it come, my look comes together beautifully, but I have no thoughts on the blush. And I think that's strange. I want to figure out why. So I'm going to put it in this project, especially because I feel like it's the time of year for this color. So this one's coming in. I am also rolling in my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Now, I have had this like repeatedly. This is not the first one that I've had. I love the way it smells. Um, <laughs> but... Um, I was just using the Marc Jacobs bronzer, and I really enjoyed that one, and it reminded me of this one. So I want to try using this one to compare, because maybe I don't need both. Maybe one is enough. And the last powder cheek product I'll talk about today is a highlighter. It is this one from Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer in the shade 001. Um... I haven't used a powder highlighter in a long time, and I think that's because I haven't been uh, setting my makeup, at least not my highlighter, so much anymore. I'm the sort of person, like, you know, I 
use a cream blush and then set it with a powder blush. Use a cream bronzer, set it with a powder bronzer. And then I would use a cream highlight and set it with a powder highlight. But I just haven't felt that extra since I haven't been on stage. Um, But I have a couple of gigs coming up in about a month. And so I would like to get my thoughts around powder highlight again. And I have not used this in so long that I I literally remember nothing about it. So that's why I wanted to put it in this project because I remember it being nice. I just don't remember why. We're down to the last three products. They're all for the lips. The first one is a lip maximizer. It's the Hyaluronic Lip Plumper from Dior. So super bougie. And I'm looking forward to using this this month. Next up, we have this Lancome lipstick in the L'Absolu Rouge Formula Shade 06 Rose New. I'm not sure if this is too pink for me. Every time I wear it, I get compliments on it. So it's probably not too pink. But I need to see if it's too pink for me (laughs) because it doesn't matter how many people like it. If I don't, I don't really want to keep it. So this is going to be on the chopping block. We'll see what I think of that this month. And the very last roll-in for this month is this lipstick from Too Faced in the shade Nude Beach. It is a very pale shade. Like if I were to wear this pale pink shade at the time of year when I could go to a nude beach, it would be too pale for me. So I'm going to have to make it nude beach time now and get some use out of this and make sure I collect my thoughts. Make sure this is still the sort of color that I'd like to be wearing. And that, my friends, is that. This was a long one, so thank you so much for hanging out with me while I organized all this stuff today. I hope you have a wonderful week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. 